Hi guys, so this is me again, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to finish our discussion on problem 4.18. Now, in this in this in this video, we're going to find the location and the amount of all bound charge due to the polarization. And now that we know these bound charges, free and bound, we are going to recalculate the field in each lab which we're going to confirm with letter B, okay? So re let's recall first that from our previous video, we were able to find the polarization in each of the slabs. We're in the polarization in slab 1 is sigma over 2, and the polarization in slab number 2 is sigma over 3, okay? So because this polarization are constant, so therefore... Okay, remember these are constant. So therefore, the the within the volume, or within the slab, there is there will be no bound charges within that volume or rho b, because we know that this is negative divergence of p, and divergence of a constant is zero. So therefore, this is zero. Okay, so now we now have. So that means. Only the bound charges, only the bound charge, we are only charges will be accumulated or bounded on the edges of each of the slab. One here, one here for slab one, here, and here for slab two. So let's start with the bound charge for slab one. So that's sigma B1. Okay? So uh, this is slab 1. So here we have two surfaces. First surface is above. And then the, uh, the normal vector will be in this direction. And then below is in this direction. Okay? So our polarization. Okay? dot n hat uh, at the bottom may now be equal to because remember that this is plus and this is minus so the polarization is in this direction and that is a constant okay so at the bottom of slab 1 n hat is upward same direction as p so this is positive right so this is equal to sigma over 2 now this is also equal to p on top dotted with n hat so in this case on top the polarization is opposite the direction of n hat so this is negative sigma over 2. So in other words, on top, now I have negative sigma over 2 bound charges and at the bottom of the uh, slab 1, we have positive sigma over 2. Okay? Now, for the second slab or slab number 2. Okay? So sigma B2 is equal to P bottom dot n hat and then P top dot n hat. Now, the polarization at the bottom is sigma over 3. Okay, the direction would still be the same. But in this case, at the bottom, the polarization is still upward while on top, the polarization is downward. So just like our uh, our case earlier, on at the bottom that it would be positive because the direction of the polarization and n hat are the same. So this is sigma over three. And at the top, the polarization is opposite the direction of your n hat, so this is negative sigma over three. So we're going to write here negative sigma over three. And at the bottom, that's positive sigma over 3. 
okay okay nice so this is now the uh, location and the amount of bound charge uh, for the two slots okay and then lastly now that we know the uh, bound charges we can now recalculate the electric field okay so for example for slab um one Okay, so for for slab one, and then we're going to use Gauss's law integral of e dot d a equals uh, q in close over epsilon. Okay, so. Now, for example, if we're going to choose, uh, go, let's rewrite this. Let's say, uh, say this is your top slab. This is plus sigma. And then we have slab 1. Okay, in slab 1, we have negative sigma on top and positive sigma over 2 sorry negative sigma on top S uh, sorry negative sigma over 2 on top and then positive sigma over 2 at the bottom so if we're going to apply gauss law so we now have uh let's say we choose this gaussian surface okay so if this gaussian surface if we're going to use this gaussian surface our Q in close will now be equal to um, sigma in close times area. And we have two sigma, sigma, and then minus sigma over 2 times A. Okay, so from Gauss law, this becomes E times A equals Q in close over epsilon sub zero so remember that this is actually equal to sigma over 2 a that's our q and close okay so plugging in this here this becomes sigma a over 2 epsilon which gives us the electric field to be sigma over 2 epsilon so this is for slab 1. We can do the same if we choose this one. If we choose this one, our Q in close will be positive sigma over 2 times A. Just like this one. Okay, and then the result would still be the same. And this is what exa what is exactly what we and this is exactly what we got in our uh, previous video in letter B. Amazing, right? Now, let's look at slab 2. Slab 2, okay? So this is your, the electric material slab 2. And at the bottom, we have your plate. This plate is correct. It should be negative sigma. Bottom of this, uh, sig this is slab number 2. The bottom is positive sigma over 3. And then on top, this is correct. This is negative sigma over 3. Okay. So doing the same. Let's, okay, let's choose this side. Okay, this side has... Uh, In this side now have a q and close will be equal to sigma over 3 minus sigma times a which is equal to negative 2 
Is that correct? Okay, negative 2. Yeah, negative 2 thirds. Sigma A. Now, Gauss law here because this is where electric field is. And the area vector is in this direction. So this is the electric field. So that means E dot DA is negative. And this is equal to negative. 2 uh, yeah, 2 thirds uh, sigma A over epsilon okay so A cancels so therefore the electric feed would be 2 thirds sigma over epsilon and this is for slab number 2. So you will notice that we got exactly the same problem, exactly the same uh, result when we find the electric field using the bound charges. Before, we use the concept of linear dielectrics or the electric displacement to calculate the electric field. This time, we're able to calculate this using Gauss law and then the bound charges so you notice how consistent the physics here okay so i hope you learned something today and today and thank you for watching then i'll see you again in the next video bye bye